Well, that song that we just sung was taken word for word from Psalm 100, which says, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. That's what Jubilate Deo means. And so we want to continue with that. And as we sing the next song, we'd actually like to invite you to sing it with us. This is Awesome God. So let's stand together and let's sing Awesome God together. And uh, the basses are going to start off, so feel free to sing along. Amen. Thank you for singing with us. You can be seated. 
Well, when we come into the presence of God and when we see him for who he really is, an awesome and holy set-apart God, we begin to realize that we are not like that, that we have many flaws, that we make many mistakes, and that we've sinned against this awesome and holy God. Uh, in the Bible, we see this response often. Isaiah the prophet, when he first came in contact with the presence of God, his response was, Woe is me, for I am a man of unclean lips. When Simon Peter came into the presence of Jesus, and when he experienced Jesus' power at one of his first encounters with him, his response to Jesus was, Depart from me, or get away from me, for I am a sinful man. Because when we see God for who he really is, his holiness, his, his righteousness, his awesomeness is far too great for us, lowly sinners, people who make mistakes. And so when we come into the presence of God, we come in from a place of need, like we were singing about earlier today. From as people who are desperately in need of a Savior through Jesus Christ. And so that's what the next song we're going to sing is about. It's a song called Kyrie Eleison, which means Lord have mercy. Sorry about that. I'm Kylie. Hi. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I had it written down. Um, Psalm 34, 4 through 6 says, I sought the Lord and he answered me, and he delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. In my desperation, I prayed, and the Lord listened. He saved me from all my troubles. I love this verse because it very eloquently proclaims the beautiful truth about Jesus. He meets us where we are. A song that we sing in chorus that I believe asserts, asserts this point very well is called Beautiful Name. It's the kind of song that meets your faith where, you're, where it's at. If you're going through a period of pain, like lines like, Your love is greater, what can separate us now, is a reminder that Jesus loves you and is with you through the storm. If you're experiencing a time of joy, repeating phrases like, What a beautiful, wonderful, powerful name, allows you to give God the glory and thanks for that time. If you need a reminder about God's love, the concept that Jesus didn't want heaven without us, so he came down and brought that gift to us, is a wonderful thing to think about. 
The thing is, when we seek God in worship, he answers us. He speaks into our lives and tells us what we need to hear in that moment. He is a beautiful, wonderful, powerful God that cares about what's happening in our lives. When we get on the edge of that idea, it's life-changing. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's powerful. In a minute, we are going to be singing What a Beautiful Name. And as you listen, I want you to allow Jesus to speak to you, um, speak to where you're at through these words. Because just like it says in Psalm 34, verse 4, when you seek God, he answers you.
Good morning. The next song we will sing is called Take Me to the Water. It was an experiment by a music professor to combine the Southern Gospel and African American styles of songs into one song. It speaks of a desire to go down to the water, leaving burdens behind, to enjoy a time of refreshment. These words had a very practical meaning for the African American slaves of the 18th and 19th centuries, as they would long to rid themselves of their master's loads and escape the hot southern sun by enjoying the refreshment of the water. There is also spiritual meaning contained in the words of the song. We as believers are called to lay down our earthly concerns and fears at the foot of the cross to enjoy peace, joy, and refreshment provided to us through our relationship with the Lord. As it says in Hebrews 12, we are to lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. In Matthew 11, Jesus says to come to him, all who are heavy laden, and he will give us rest. I have been convicted in my life that I don't often enough come into the presence of the Lord, repenting of fear and laying all these fears and troubles before him. It is then that you and I can experience the peace, joy, and confidence in the sanctifying work of God in our lives. I challenge you as you listen to the song to repent and lay down anything that is hindering your commitment and relationship with the Lord and enter into the joy, peace, and freedom he has for you when you come to the water.
Well, the next song that we're going to sing is um, is a song that was actually written in the 1500s. Could I get that intro slide up there, Don, for that? It's a song called If You Love Me, and it's taken word for word out of John chapter 15, verses 15 to 17. And we put it at this point in our program because it's a really appropriate response to everything that we've been singing about so far as we respond to what God has done for us. And uh, so what I love about this song, actually, is where it comes from. Um, it is, is taken from William Tyndale's 1539 translation of the Bible, um, often known as the Great Bible. And uh, what's important about that is that back in, in this time period, uh, there were few worship services in English. Uh, we sang a couple songs in Latin at the beginning of our time today. And can you imagine going into a worship service and everything is in Latin? You can't understand a word that's being said. And so imagine for the first time walking into a worship service and you're hearing the message of Jesus in your own language. And suddenly it's making sense. That's what I think about when I think about this next song that we're going to sing. One of those early songs written word for word from one of the first English translations that we have of the Word of God. That, that amazes me. So I just want you to, as you hear these words... Um, just respond to them uh, and receive them from a place of gratitude that we have the living and active word of God in our lives today. This is If You Love Me. Good morning. We want to thank you very much uh, for staying today. We are so happy to be here. Uh, I was here four years ago with a little bit of a smaller group than this. My name is Don Rose, and I'm the Chief Administrative Officer at Great Lakes. I just finished my 22nd year uh, working there. It was a school that changed my life, and I know many of your lives have been changed by Great Lakes or Western, and uh, that is something that we share. But we also share this opportunity to be able to worship the one true God, and his spirit transcends distance and borders and cultures and languages. 
And uh, that's a rich blessing for us. For you to open up your spiritual home, for those of you who open up your homes to welcome us, we are so grateful for the hospitality. And our prayer is that we bring you a measure of encouragement today, that we glorify God. And I, and I have to tell you something. So uh, how many of you graduated on Friday night? Put up your hand. <laughs> so... So Friday night, we had graduation, which ended around 9 o'clock. And then, uh, needless to say, they didn't all just rush home and go to bed so that we could fly to Winnipeg yesterday. Uh, they celebrated that a little bit, as they should have. Uh, some of them, even though they were advised two weeks ago to pack ahead, did not. Uh, they packed, you know, at, at midnight and maybe got a couple hours of sleep before we got on the plane yesterday. I'm glad that we had last night. But if they look a little weary, it's because it's been a full week. Now, I also want to say this, though. Technically... Everyone that put up their hand is done, right? And many times, uh, some of us may remember when we were finished high school, uh, the, the moment that graduation was finished, we ran, right? We were like, free! Um, and, and they could have just been enjoying this week, uh, relaxing and recovering from the trauma of exams. And uh, instead, they're here, and we have an opportunity to sing over the next 10 days at seven churches and some retirement homes. And that, to me, is a tremendous encouragement, that these young people would take that opportunity to be able to lift up the tremendous gift they have that I do not, uh, a voice to praise God and to encourage people. And so that's, that's why we're here today. We pray that we can encourage you. I do want to introduce you to the other adults. So Josh Hunter is our chorus director uh, and, and one of our two bus drivers. So we appreciate everything that Josh does. And also with us, if Ingrid, you could just stand for a moment. This is Ingrid Kielstra. She's had six boys who've graduated from Great Lakes. She survived that experience. <laughs> And, uh, and Ingrid is traveling with us. Uh, she is the director of our North American Admissions. Uh, I just have three things to ask for you to consider. First of all, if you'd like to know what is happening at Great Lakes, God has been richly blessing us, and I don't want to take a lot more time. Uh, I know you've stayed longer than usual uh, for us today, and I thank you for that. But if you'd like to speak to any of the us afterward, we'd love to tell you some of the things that are happening on our campus. Uh, but there's three things I want to ask you to consider. The first thing is this. In this day and age when we can talk to each other through technology, uh, we, are, we are seeking people who would help give direction to our school by becoming members of our corporation or our board. Uh, our annual corporation membership is $50, and that enables you to become a corporation member of both Great Lakes Bible College and Great Lakes Christian High School. Uh, we need good people to help us make decisions for uh, what we're going to do as we continue to serve uh, families in this country and from all corners of the world. Um, second, uh, if, if you have the ability, uh, this kind of trip obviously comes with, with its costs. And if you were able and willing to uh, help us by making a donation to the school that is tax receivable that would offset our costs, we would appreciate that consideration. And the last thing is, this is very exciting. I don't know how many of you have ever had the opportunity to be at Great Lakes. Uh, there's a little brochure on the table at the back. And on the second page, you'll see this uh, iconic blue tile facade which was really cool in 1965. Um, in, in, in 2019, um, although it is iconic and some people may lament it being gone, there are a lot more who go, you know, that building should probably come into the 21st century. Uh, in addition to that, our building built in 1965 is not accessible. Uh, there are lots of people who cannot come in and enjoy all of the things that happen at our school, not just education. And so we're embarking on a capital campaign over the next year to be able to make our, our school completely accessible, to be able to put in a full service elevator that takes people up to our classrooms and offices on the third floor and down into our gymnasium. Uh, it is a huge undertaking. And if that is something on uh, your heart that, uh, that you might consider, I ask you to take one of those and, and consider that. Um, and that would be a real blessing to all the people who take advantage of our facilities. I want to thank you again for having us here today. To worship with you this morning was a rich blessing to us, and we just pray encouragement on you. God bless you. I, I can't believe I do have one, one last thing. 
Uh, four years ago, we were able to establish the legacy of Western Christian College Scholarship. And it is a scholarship that several people have contributed toward. Uh, it is one that enables any student who wants to come to Great Lakes west of Ontario uh, to be able to come. And, and our starting talk is at 50% of all fees, including one round trip flight in a year. And so we've had one student in Western Canada who's taken advantage of that. I think one of the things as parents, as a parent with a child that just graduated, um, it's hard to let your child go away, even at, at university. But even if it's for a one-year experience, uh, you have to deal with whether you, you can enable and, and help uh, uh, or make that decision to be far away. But I think we often dismiss that kind of opportunity due to finance. Um, the legacy of Western Christian College Scholarship takes that away. So if that is the only thing that stands in the way between you and a family considering sending a child to Great Lakes, please speak to me or to Ingrid. And we're very, very happy to be able to honor the legacy of Western in doing that. Thank you. We're just going to take a minute to introduce ourselves. So we're going to say who we are and where we're from. My name is Josiah Lodewijk, and I'm from Jordan, Ontario. My name is Joshua Kwame. I'm from Abuja, Nigeria. My name is Ethan Kennedy. I'm from Beamsville, Ontario. My name is Jeremy Dembach, and I'm from Hong Kong. My name is Isaiah Stout. I'm from Grisby, Ontario. My name is Eunice Chung, and I'm from Hong Kong. My name is Ellis Cariaga, and I'm from the Philippines. My name is Eden Meissen, and I'm from Smithville, Ontario. My name is Peter Tun, and I'm also from Jordan, Ontario. I'm Emily Rose. I'm from Vineland, Ontario. I'm Kylie Galt. I'm from Guelph, Ontario. I'm Michaela Ramey. I'm from Beamsville, Ontario. I'm Sydney Cook. I'm from Beamsville, Ontario. I'm Joy Schellenberg. I'm from Vineland, Ontario. My name is Lydia Schlotter, and I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. My name is Kenwin Fessick, and I'm also from Beamsville, Ontario. My name is Shayla Buist. I'm from Gunsby, Ontario. My name is Fei Chen. I'm from Shanghai, China. Well, we're going to sing one final song for you, and it's a, a really well-known song called the Hallelujah Chorus. And uh, before we do, though, I'd like to invite Michaela to share a little bit about her experience of learning this song and what the song means to her. Okay. Hi. The Hallelujah Chorus was challenging for me. I didn't really like learning it. I thought it was silly because we weren't learning it for Christmas, even though it's usually sung at Christmas time. I didn't really enjoy chorus practice for the two to three months it took to learn it, and I didn't enjoy performances until Josh had said this one thing that changed my entire opinion of the song. During the Hallelujah Chorus, people stood up for the King of England. Well, we don't stand up for him, but we do sing to someone who's much better than him. We sing to the King of Kings. This humbled me immensely because somewhere along the way, I forgot the meaning of the song, and I focused on myself and what I wanted. And we all need that slap in the face reminder that God is so great. In the song, we use the phrase, for the Lord God omnipotent. If you're anything like me, you actually don't know what that word means. You just kind of nod along. Just to clarify, I do know what it means now. It means having unlimited power, able to do anything. And its synonyms are all-powerful, almighty, supreme, most high, and preeminent. This song now reminds me of God's power, and it continually makes me take that step back and appreciate and fully embrace God each time that I sing this song or catch myself humming it. It helps me embrace the fact that I, a lowly sinner, get to sing for the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the all-powerful, mighty God. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Hallelujah Chorus. And in honor of our King of Kings and Lord of Lords, we'd like to invite you to stand with us as we close with this together.
Amen. Let me just take a minute to pray. Lord, we worship you because you are our King of kings and Lord of lords. There is no one like you in all the earth, and you are worthy of all praise and all glory and all honor. And so, Lord, we turn our eyes to you this morning, and as we go from this place today, Lord, we pray that this would be the anthem of our hearts, God, that our lives would reflect the glory of you, Lord, the glory of our King of Kings. It's in Jesus' name we pray together. Amen.